Okay, so let's take a couple of questions. One is, how does an economist think about, well, why is there growth? You know, why is it that we were so much richer at the end of the 20th century than we were at the beginning of the 20th century? And, you know, let's talk about it first just as a historical matter. If you just said, how is it that we were four times, five times richer at the end of the 20th century than we were at the beginning? I think there's a lot of evidence that says technology is the key. And the, that evidence comes from, you know, uh, from U.S. data, but also other countries in, you know, uh, around the world and over much longer periods of time. But there are lots of sources of evidence that say, like, technology is uh, just a, a key component. Maybe not the only component. First, there's, you know, the growth accounting evidence. So people have just taken U.S. data over you know, say a century or longer. That's about how long we have data for. There's really no economics here, it's just accounting. You know, we can measure growth in per capita income. We can estimate growth in the stock of physical capital. We can uh, estimate growth in the stock of human capital or, you know, just the quality of labor. And then just as an accounting measure, say how much of the growth in output is accounted for with growth in physical and human capital. And, you know, some is. Uh, it's not trivial. But there's a lot left over, a huge amount left over. And technology seems to be at least a good candidate for, for the difference. Let me talk about each of those components a little bit. So you talked about growth in physical capital. So those would be the kinds of things, machinery, plant and equipment, all the kind of assets that, say, typically business assets people would associate with that. There's also household assets. Yeah, so in fact, the way, uh, you know, we construct estimates of the size of the capital stock is just by taking investment in structures, investment in equipment, and applying some depreciation rates, and building up a stock figure from uh, investments over a long period of time. So we have per person, because we're doing everything per capita here. Here now we're looking at everything per capita. So we have more physical assets per person. So right. that sort of says there's just more stuff that you have to work with, and presumably if that stuff is productive, you should be able to produce more output per person if you right. have more assets per right. person. Right. Okay, that's exactly. one part. So that's one part. And that has added to growth, but doesn't explain the big growth in output that we've seen. No, no. Okay, maybe a third of it, maybe a quarter of it, something like that. Let's say now we say, well, but now you've forgotten the other part. We economists know, I'm a labor economist, and we know that people are a very important part of the equation, probably more important than the physical part in yes, terms of definitely. Yeah. their contribution to output. And now we're doing it per capita, so number of people isn't really the dominant story here, but the quality of labor has gone up. If you look at the education right. level and skills mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. possessed by the average worker in 1900, far below where they were for the average worker in 2000. Right, absolutely. So educational attainment went way up over, you know, look at the educational attainment of the workforce that increased enormously. Um, experience also comes into play, so other factors, but I, I don't have to tell you you're a labor economist, but just, yeah, it's a much higher quality workforce at the end of the century compared with the beginning. We can at least estimate by how, you know, the size of the improvement. Do that off, with, you know, cross-sectional wage data um, and get, so again, so that contributes, you know, it, it contributes a big chunk, but then there's a big chunk left over. Okay, so one approach to thinking about growth and isolating the contribution of technology is to sort of, like you said, do an accounting exercise. Say, look, output's gone up a certain amount. Some of it can be explained by the fact that we have more machinery. Some of it can be explained by the fact that we have better workers, but output per worker is still a lot higher than either of those would predict, therefore, it must be that, quote, technology is improved. 
there's the mystery factor. Somebody so technology is yeah the, the, uh, the prime suspect. Okay, so technology. Now, there's another approach also, though, right, which is to look at how we do things today mm -hmm. is very different, and the kinds of things we're doing today are very different than it was. So that's a different kind of evidence on technology, right, that sure. It's not that we're just magically doing exactly what we were doing before and we're just getting more output. We don't have the same guy out in his farm field with the same crops and somehow magically he's just getting more farm output. We now that's sort of a difficult part of measuring growth over very long periods of time. It's just, you know, you think about the set of uh, products that's being produced, it just, it changes over time. So a lot of the stuff that was produced in 1900 it just, it's not produced at all in 2000. The things that we take for granted in, you know, now, you know, telephones, all the electronics, didn't exist in 1900. So you have to do some work to try and figure out, even just like, how do we, how do we measure the value of the goods and services produced in 1900 versus the goods and services produced in 2000? Yeah, like I like to tell my class that like, to do the amount of computation in my cell phone would require like world GDP or something from like 1900, <laughs> yeah, right? It yeah. would, I mean, literally, you just couldn't do that. Could, so yeah. part of it is expanding the, you can see the role of technology by expanding the portfolio of things that we do. Mm -hmm.